So we've heard it so many times before. The Philippines is right smack in the demographic sweet spot. But incoming social economic planning secretary Ernesto Perna says it might not it may not be so sweet after all because of poor education and health care. Bevatividad spoke to him about how to manage the country's growing population. Well the marching orders are the ones uh, in the eight point agenda. But I think he added a nine uh, point number nine, which is which is uh, which has to do with the RH law implementation. Uh, rapid and sustained implementation of the responsible parenthood and reproductive health law uh, and he has been he has been talking about family planning which is part of uh, the RH law and even you know fighting with the church uh, with the bishops you know just to emphasize his point yeah. sir your uh, your your doctorate has been in in, uh, in uh, demographics um, in terms of um, the Philippines, one of its one of the some economists would say that our one of our selling points is our demographic dividend. The demographic dividend is conditional. This is often misunderstood. It's conditional on the quality of uh, education mm -hmm. and healthcare provided to the youth, mm -hmm. so that they become uh, productive members of the workforce mm -hmm. when they come of age. But right now, because of uh, poor quality education and poor healthcare. And uh, you know, families having so many children, uh, for whom they cannot provide an healthcare and other services adequately, mm -hmm. they are not uh, going to be productive members of the labor of the workforce. Well, do you think his plan to um, limit children, the number of children for every family, to about three, will that be acceptable? No, that's not, no, that's not a that's not a plan to limit. It's mm -hmm. just a, a suggestion. Oh, okay. I think he says that. Uh, that would be better than having six children and the three children or two children. You cannot, you know, take in, you cannot take care take care of them well enough, no, or provide good education and health care. That has been the cause of our intergeneration poverty, intergenerational poverty, and uh, that's why we ha we still have a high poverty incidence and huge inequality across income classes. The NEDA board has a big role to play in, in um, what infra comes out of the term of Duterte. What's the, what sectors are you targeting to focus those infra. infrastructures in? Infra in agriculture and in the regions mm -hmm. in terms of uh, space, you know, of the space economy. Uh, you know, too much uh, concentration on infra spending in Metro Manila and Calabarzon and uh, the other regions are being neglected. Farm to market roads, uh, post-harvest uh, facilities, electricity, in, a, in other words, adequate power supply. So th those things will help uh, uh, light up or enliven the rural areas where the concentration of poverty is. Given our infrastructure backlogs, backlogs or deficits in infrastructure, we really need uh, probably even more than 5%. Uh, well, 6% um, maybe, 7% sustained over six years should uh, reduce our backlog. Would, would we have that leeway to spend so much on ag um, infrastructure? If you reduce corruption, tax evasion, smuggling, ano pa? Smuggling and uh, yeah, you you can you can uh, generate a lot of revenue from from those uh, you know activities.